do love an open platform. I want to tell people right up front what they need to do, and that is contact their senators because the Mobile Now Act, which is S-19, an act called the Digit Act, which is S-88, um, have been passed out of the Commerce Committee and are heading to the full Senate. So people need to contact their senators and actually contact all of the senators and let them know that you do not want this to be passed. Matter of fact, you would like to ask your senator to put a hold on it. Senators, one senator can put a hold on a bill and keep it from being heard by the Senate. So you do have the power in your state to make a big difference. So contact your two senators, and I ask you to actually also, also contact the rest of the senators because this bill is a nationwide bill that is designed to bring small cell basically small cell tower transmitters close to your home, and that's the big issue. You have small cell transmitters, but even though they're small, they're big enough to cause harm to people, and they're putting people, they're these very close to people's home. Understand this. The new 5G technology is now going to be from 24 gigahertz uh, to 90 gigahertz, and you can look at the FCC's website. They're very proud of this program. It's not hard to find information there. Um, but that's the plan. But understand this. Our current frequency, like your cell phone operates on 90, 900 megahertz, so that's near 1 gigahertz. And then your Wi-Fi operates on 2.4 or 5 um, gigahertz. That's around 3 gigahertz. Um, and some Wi-Fis operate on 5 gigahertz. Now they're jumping up to 24 gigahertz to 90 gigahertz. This is high frequency, high density, high intensity microwave radiation. And as you go up the spectrum, you get closer to x-ray. So you're talking about intensely microwaving your population. And we know that from regular cell towers and the lower frequencies, people experience increased risk of cancer, increased risk of neurological problems, increased immune system problems, and reproductive harm. One of the things the host was nice enough to ask is, you know, is there any website people can go to for more information? There are some very good resources out there. The one I like to focus on is I use saferemr.com saferemr.com. That's out of UC Berkeley School of Public Health, and Joel Moskowitz is a scientist there, and he's been following the research worldwide, and he's very careful about vetting it and making sure he brings the best research forth so that people can understand the issues that are going on. Another website is called bioinitiative.org, bioinitiative.org. This looks at 1,800 studies. It's actually in its second generation or second edition. So it looked at 1,800 studies the first time, and now it looks at additional 1,800 studies. So you're talking about 3,600 studies showing health effects to this various systems of the body. It's basically talking about microwaving people, and people need to understand that their cell phone is a two-way microwave transmitter. And when you put the cell phone up against your head, you're microwaving your head. Now, when you put it that way, most people say, ooh, you know, is it a good idea to microwave your head for several hours a day? Most people would say, no, not really. Um, but that's what you're doing. And the industry has done a brilliant job in separating the benefits of this technology. And no one's going to argue the, the convenience benefits of this technology. But those convenience benefits have to be balanced with health concerns because there are real health concerns. And they go back many, many decades. You can look up something called microwave syndrome, where they started talking about uh, microwave effects from uh, people in the Navy who were on ships with radar. Um, back then, we had UHF TV, so we had uh, a transmission that was similar to our Wi-Fi transmission. And we had two-way radios, and these two-way radios also emitted microwave energy. So they had, they had technology that emitted this, this energy enough that they could look at this, and they were seeing biological symptoms going back 40 years. Unfortunately, because of that research, the industry has known exactly where to lie and hide um, about health effects and how to avoid talking about them because they know they're definitely, definitely there. The host also mentioned that some people we already know are electrosensitive. That is, they develop neurological symptoms from being exposed to wireless radiation. Um, you know, there's a long history of this. It's definitely not people's imagination. Other countries like uh, Sweden recognize electrosensitivity as a disability, and they pay out just like they would any other disability, um, and they're accommodating people. So this is important because Europe had wireless before us. You know, this started over in Europe, and then after it started in Europe and was used in Europe, we brought it to the U.S. and we blew it up. But um, they had it before us, and we should really pay attention to, to them because they saw health effects much, much earlier than we did. Instead, we're ignoring their science. We're ignoring what they've seen for years, um, and we're just pretending only our science matters. Um, but at the same time, we're not really funding much science here. Most of the science is being done overseas. If people want to learn about the research, you can look up a guy named Leonard Hardell, L-E-N-N-A-R-T, Hardell, H-A-R-D-E-L-L. -L. He's out of Sweden. He runs a group of scientists that have done many, many studies, and luckily they've been funded publicly and not 
um, through the wireless industry themselves. And that's how the industry is hidden health effects. They fund their own studies. They design around the problems. They know exactly where the problem is. They use uh, groups of people that are too small to show statistically significant effects. Um, they do studies for too short a period to show um, effects. Um, and now their latest thing is to use simulated Wi-Fi or simulated cell phone radiation, not real ones. So the simulated stuff doesn't pulse as much, and it's really in the pulsation or the modulation. Um, and the modulation means, you know, how do you, how do you pack information onto these microwaves that seem to be really uh, the best predictor of something that's going to be disturbing to the cells or to the body. Um, and, um, and so that's how we've done it. And the other, the other way the industry has done it, they've funded their own research, they've designed around the problems, and then every time there's a study on the one side that's done by us and may, is not funded by them, they fund four studies of their own ca uh, contradicting it, and then they come to this inconclusive um, conclusion about health effects. But that's really silly because scientists say if you have a good study and it shows health effects, then you have a good study that shows health effects, and our government should certainly pay attention to the hundreds and hundreds of studies that do show health effects um, and, not, and be very conscious of the funding and the design, the poor design that are used in a lot of these studies that don't show health effects. Um, and they should side on the side of caution that is protecting us, um, but they haven't done that at all. They're moving forward in very aggressively, and they're taking wireless. They're increasing the frequency, which is increasing the pulsation and increasing uh, the amount of waves per second, which we believe will increase the health effects. They're bringing the transmitters closer to people so they feel more affected, um, which we feel will make this technology much, much more dangerous. Um, and they're doing it every three, or three to ten homes because that's what the technology requires. This new high-frequency stuff does not travel very well, the 4G lower uh, frequencies they have much bigger waves. They travel much more. This is a much denser, tighter wave. It doesn't travel very well. doesn't go in all directions very well. So you have to have transmitters literally every three to ten homes. And if you live in one of those homes where it's right in front of your house, I would expect those people largely to, be get, to develop symptoms. Uh, a lot of studies with the old frequencies, the lower frequencies, say about 30% of the people exposed will develop some kind of neurological symptoms. Um, and the cancer rates are about four times what they normally are. So, um, so we're very concerned about this. This has anyone who knows anything about wireless health effects very upset, um, and for good reason. Um, they're doing this program, and they're consciously doing it so that these transmitters will be exempted from environmental review. They'll be exempted from historical review, so they can put them on historical buildings. They can put them on, you know, they're going to put them in public right of ways. They're going to put them on light poles. They're going to put them. Um, or anything that's, that's public right away, so you won't be notified, you won't have given an opportunity to push back, and even if you did, you wouldn't be allowed to consider health or environment. People need to understand that our, the way our, our wireless networks were built out is based on the, the passage of the 1996 Telecom Act, which was to encourage the development of the wireless infrastructure and the wireless system in this country. As part of that, there was Section 704 in that act, that said that only the FCC can look at environmental issues and develop environmental standards. Through several legal cases, they were able to expand that to health and safety. So that if they put a cell tower currently in, in your neighborhood, you may be notified by your zoning department there's going to be a cell tower you know, right near your house. Um, you can come and talk about whether you want it or not. When you go to that hearing, and I've been to many of them, the first thing they'll say is, you know, you can talk about whether you want this or not, but you cannot talk about health and safety because we're not allowed to consider it based on the 1996 Telecom Act. So the question is, why would you have to ban looking at health and safety if there was no health and safety issue? And how, how un-American, undemocratic, unfair, and unjust is it to ban legally looking at health and safety when it is the mandate of local and state government to protect the health and state safety of their residents? And this law uh, specifically bans that from happening. Now, with uh, these new small cells, they are pushing to actually exempt them from the whole Telecom Act so that the Telecom Act that lays out a procedure for being notified and, and going through a process of looking at cell towers and whether they should go in, they're going to exempt them from the whole thing, including environmental and health effects, So because they're small. And one of the scientists said, that's ridiculous. That's like saying, you know, an atom bomb is small, and so therefore we don't have to worry about its effects, especially with small cell transmitters. They're designed to distribute um, and cover a big area, and together, as a network, they're going to cover the whole country. So they may be small, one may be small, but their network is going to be pervasive and cover the whole country. So reasoning that they shouldn't be covered for environmental reasons because they're small is, is absolutely ridiculous and just shows the length they'll go 
um, to put these things in. And really, people need to stand up to this kind of ridiculousness because the consequences are very severe. We are human beings. Our cells are electromagnetic. Um, we don't like being microwaved with electromagnetic waves. They disturb the functioning of our cells, and that's what the research shows. That while the microwaves are not ionizing, so they don't have enough energy to pull an electron off of the cell and cause heating, what, what our scientists are showing is that it is enough to increase free radical production inside the cells that over time causes oxidative stress that damages the DNA, and that damaged DNA can lead to cancer, uh, neurological problems, um, immune system problems, and reproductive harm. But the neurological problems also, because it also shows that these microwaves impair the cell's ability to repair and function and signal to other cells in some cases. And so people's uh, you know, neurological systems, they start to have neurological effects. For a lot of women who are very absorbent of this energy, they start having immune system problems because the cells are closed down, protecting themselves. They're not signaling like they normally do, and you don't have the normal immune system function you know, um, that depends on this kind of intercellular communication. So this is what the science is showing. We have the mechanism. Um, we have the mechanism. I say we have the mechanism because um, I'll refer you to a study of studies, and uh, I'm going to get the name of it for your listeners so that they can see and they can look up for themselves, you know, what I'm talking about. So let me pull out the uh, study for you and read it off. Okay. So people just, you can just Google this. It's not, it's not hard. It's called Oxidative Mechanisms of Biological Activity of Low Intensity Radio Frequency Radiation. So oxidative mechanisms of biological activity of low-intensity radiofrequency radiation. And one of the first uh, authors is Igor, I-G-O-R, and the last name is Y-A-K, Y-M-E-N-K-O, Yakimenko, Y-A-K-Y-M-E-N-K-O. And this kind of points out one of the ridiculousness of this issue is that countries like the Ukraine and countries like Turkey are far ahead of us in terms of the research looking at biological effects. While we are busy proliferating this technology, completely exempt from looking at health effects and considering their impact. It's, it's absolutely reckless. It's absolutely harmful. It's absolutely unjust. And I think it's criminal because m many of these people who develop cancer die. And brain cancer has been highly associated um, with the exposure from, wire from wireless cell phones. And if you look at the National Toxicology Program study, National Toxicology Program study came out about, um, the U.S. did it, it was a $25 million study that showed that wireless radiation, the kind that was used in 2G, um, caused brain cancer and heart cancer non-thermally. And that's important because our standards are designed, our FCC standards are designed um, to avoid the problem. That is, they cover thermal heating and above. And this study was carefully done, and they spent $25 million making sure that there were new, no thermal effects, yet they were able to induce cancer in the rats. And they say a low incidence of cancer, but it was uh, two in 20, two, the one in 12 of the rats had either cancerous or precancerous cells. That's not a low incidence in my book because those precancerous cells would become cancerous. Now, the important thing about this study, um, I'm trying to think of – Exactly how to refer you to that one. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll come to it later. But um, the important thing about that study was, was a couple things. The first thing was it showed that um, our standards are completely inadequate. Our thermal standards, our thermal and above, are completely inadequate because they don't uh, account for the mechanism that induced the cancer in these rats non-thermally. And we've known that, and, we can, and that's the big issue, is that it's this non-ionizing, non-thermal uh, energy that is causing cancer and is not being accounted for or protected by our safety standards. So the FCC um, has done several things uh, to hide health effects. First, we have this standard that is uh, thermal and doesn't recognize non-thermal. Um, the second is we have the Telecom Act that exempts people, local and state governments, from even looking at health effects. That's a problem. And the third is the FCC um, regulates this technology, and the FCC has no one qualified to set safety standards. They're not a safety agency, but they are saying that it's completely safe, which is completely ridiculous also when you understand it, and yet it's not challenged, and people will seem to be okay with it. So you have a non-safety agency uh, setting the safety standard, which are completely inadequate, saying and maintaining that standard and saying that they're safe, even though they have no one qualified to say that, preventing other agencies 
from um, being involved in and uh, looking at safety. Now they do consult with the FDA. Um, they do consult with some other agencies, but those other agencies, uh, and I, on, I know on the web, FDA's website it says we are not permitted by law to test the safety of wireless devices. So they're not allowed to test the safety of devices, but the FCC is not doing it either. Um, and they're not given any budget to look at these non-thermal effects. They're only able to review studies from other countries. So while we're spending, and this new 5G technology to roll it out is estimated that the industry will spend $56 billion rolling out this technology because of all of the cell transmitters they have to put out. While they're spending $56 billion rolling out all this technology, they're not spending any of that to look at non-thermal biological effects to make sure it's safe for you. This should really upset people because it's hard, it's hard to not see the injustice of all this and the ridiculousness of this and how they're getting away with this. And I would say they're getting away with murder because people really do die from the cancers they develop near this. And people really do have trouble functioning and become disabled due to the neurological symptoms near these transmitters. And they continue to get away with it. And now they're just making a bad thing much, much worse in every way, bringing it closer and using higher frequencies. You know, it's pretty incredible because you look at right now the implications of consumerism and technology, cell phone towers, microwaves, etc. I keep track of the radiation levels extensively. I've actually got a nice watch that's got a, a really nice radiation counter built into it. It's got a nice tube. I can't remember the name of the specific tube that keeps track of the radiation, but I've noticed that the levels over the past few years, since 2013, have slowly increased. Not a lot to where it's like freaking me out as far as how high the levels are, but to the fact that it has almost doubled over the past three years. Uh, if you look at what they used to be consistently in 2013, they're around 0 0.07, and oftentimes you'll see it now up to 0 0.14 microsieverts per hour, which once again, that isn't a high level of radiation, but the fact that it's slowly crept up. And I've traveled the country quite extensively. Some places are higher than others, and a lot of times it's natural depending on where you're located. I'm not, you know, there's a difference between radioactive isotopes from plutonium, uh, the effects of that versus just radon or something like that. But what you're talking about is literally cooking the population. I mean, that is insane to think that they can come up with this stuff that's pushing 30, 40 times the amount of frequency levels that has, I mean, people are made up of frequencies. Everything is a frequency at some level. So if you're bombarding somebody constantly with these different frequencies, it will have an effect on them. And yeah, it's a, it's a multi, 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 multi billion dollar industry. And the people that have the keys to the kingdom are seeing this money come in and how much it's paying them. And they're not willing to give that up. So they're just getting lobbyists and people to keep these bills and laws in play to allow them to continue to do this. So until something changes at that level, I mean, there's going to have to be, you know, what would it take to stop this in a nonviolent manner? Well, what I'm telling people is to do whatever they think it takes to stop this, because this is the point where, you know, people who are in the know and understand this issue, they say, we don't know what it's going to take. It may take bodies in the streets for people to finally wake up to this. Well, this may be our bodies in the street scenario um, because the transmitters are located so close. And maybe every three homes you'll have a cancer a person getting cancer, and then maybe someone will relate the two. But I don't know. People are already developing lots of cancer, and people aren't making a, a connection between one and the other. People need to understand LeBron James had a tumor taken out of his jaw in 2009. Now, most people would argue he's our healthiest, most able-bodied citizen, but, but he developed a salivary gland tumor. And you need to understand that Israel has done their own studies, and they have come out and said that our study, their studies have found an increase in salivary gland tumors um, due to cell phone use, and they're warning their population about it. This was the kind of tumor that LeBron James had. People need to understand um, that a Vice President and Biden's son, Bo Biden, died from a brain tumor behind his ear. He was only 46 when he died. He developed it when he was 42. And that's the most common place to develop a tumor from your cell phone. So we are, we are killing off our young, able-bodied uh, workers. We are microwave poisoning uh, our people. And if you start looking at transmitter exposure and wireless radiation exposure, it explains a lot of the increases in some of these strange cancers that are happening in very young people in very strange places. Um, it starts to explain what's going on and people are able to put two and two together. 
But so far it hasn't happened. Um, but it's quite sad because, you know, Vice President Biden is on a, you know, a war to fight cancer. He should be on a war to fight the microwave radiation that caused his son's cancer. Um, it's going to cause lots of other people's cancer um, and be testing the frequencies because people need to understand the solution, I believe, is testing these frequencies before we release and use them for biological effects. Makes sense, right? Do biological studies looking at these frequencies and petri dishes, animal studies, and see if there's any kind of health effects before you roll them out, before you sell them to companies to use, before you expose the public. Test these frequencies. We may find frequencies that aren't bioactive. They don't cause oxidative stress in the cells, and they still can carry data, and that would be the solution. But right now, we have frequencies that are very powerful. They carry lots of data and travel great distances which is great for the job, but we need to take into account the biological as well. Uh, the other solution, because people say, talk about solutions. All right, the other solution is to warn people about health effects so that if they start developing health effects, they can reduce their exposure and get better. Um, and, you know, the easy solution is using wired connections, using wired connections to landlines, using wired connections to your laptop and the Internet. Um, what's sad is, in, in addition to voting for 5G and the rollout of 5G, the FCC also voted to allow um, companies, telecom companies, to, um, to uh, decommission their landlines. So that means getting rid of the landlines if there's, a safe, if, if, there's not safe, if there's an alternative available, and that's usually a wireless alternative. That is forcing people over from safe, safe alternative landlines over to wireless technology, increasing their exposure. Um, this is the exactly wrong move. We should be preserving our landlines, and we should be expanding them, and we should be using a multi-solution. Uh, uh, we should be a multifaceted solution. That is, use landlines as much as you can and supplement them with wireless to maximize the benefits and minimize the harm. Instead, what we're doing is we're forcing people away from the safe alternative, maximizing their exposure to wireless radiation, and bringing it closer and closer to them. We are going in the exactly wrong direction. The other thing we're doing that's a problem is, in terms of maximization, is now we're starting to expose people very young, giving children all these wireless devices, mandating all this wireless schools up through development. So we have it from early, early to late. Then we're also uh, exposing them in all environments, exposed at school. They come home, they're exposed. Um, they're being exposed at work. And now with 5G, we're going to expose the, all the free areas, all the public spaces along the streets and the parks and everything, so that you have maximized exposure to wireless radiation. Well, we know with maximized exposure, you're going to get the disease even quicker. And for electrosensitivity, you know, there's a tipping point. Once you get exposed enough, intensely enough, people can become electrosensitive. And as one doctor said, you know, once you become electrosensitive, you're sensitive. And you might be sensitive to different types of frequencies. What's interesting is some people are electrosensitive and they can't handle, like, smart meters. Um, that was these little powered, little wireless meters that they put on people's houses so they didn't have to come check your meter. They could just drive by. And that frequency, they said, they tended, they seem to have chosen a frequency that's very disturbing to people. Um, and so a lot of people have neurological symptoms. Um, um, so, so that was very unfortunate. If I know people who are sensitive to smart meters and had to move out of their home, which is really, was really severe, but yet they could use a cell phone to use a different frequency. So, um, some people are going to be sensitive to some frequencies, and some people are sensitive to other frequencies. Now, that's an issue with this new 5G rollout, because while you might not have been sensitive to the low frequencies, you may be sensitive to the high frequencies, or the combination of the two, because they're not taking away the low frequencies, they're just adding the high frequencies on top of it. Um, so we have a real scenario of maximization and also close proximity, which uh, leads us to believe that this is going to be an extremely, extremely dangerous human experiment. And that's what we're doing. We are experimenting with people's health. The government is experimenting with your health and is selling off your health to the highest bidder. And frankly, what they end up paying, getting paid for it is absolutely not that much, you know, uh, especially given how much money um, the industry gives each politician. I figure, you know, it's like 30 cents a person in terms of how much they're giving people to pay them off to do what they want. Um, that doesn't include the auctions. Actually, the auctions are quite a bit of money. The government's making quite a bit of money selling off airspace. Um, and I think um, the recent Spectrum auction, I think, raised like $50 billion or something like that. But I may be wrong on those numbers. But you're talking about lots of money. It's just the government's interested in making that money. So that's their incentive. And the other thing, the FCC and Tom Wheeler, who has a long history of uh, hiding and uh, health effects and uh, redirecting research from uh, government to industry. Uh, 
one of the brilliant things he did um, was that he allowed companies to take their time in paying off the money they pay at auction so that um, they could develop the technology, and from the money they used to develop the technology, they could pay the government for the frequencies. But what that does is it puts government in bed with industry in terms of being a partner and getting paid when the industry profits. And it kind of leaves the public interest you know, out in the cold. So uh, he was brilliant in setting it up that way. Uh, and um, as a result, uh, um, I think the public interest has been compromised. So um, people should be very, very concerned. Let me tell you again what we, we, should, we need to do in case people are just coming in now. People need to say to contact their senators because the Mobile Now Act, S-19, and uh, the Digit Act, S-88, have passed out of the Senate Commerce Committee and are heading to the Senate for a full vote. People need to contact their senator, their senators, and also honestly contact all of the senators, take the time to call all the senators, and saying that you want them to say vote no on this, and ask your senator and the other senators to put a hold on this bill so it's not heard by the full Senate. Because one senator, one senator can hold, put a hold on the bill and keep it from moving forward. That's what we want to see happen with these two bills. They're not in the best interest of this country. They're going to be extremely, extremely harmful to the people living near these small cell transmitters every three to ten homes. And what they're doing is absolutely unjust and not right and criminal, and they should be held responsible for the harm they're causing. And I hope that every person listening out there is part of that, of the part of the solution of bringing, of, of bringing our government, holding them responsible, and holding them responsible for really the criminal harm they're doing to people living near these transmitters, and start waking up as people are going to get sicker and sicker from this technology, especially as it's brought real close. Now, so how much further, how much time do people have to, you know, get a hold of their senator or whatever to make a difference? I would tell people to do it now because we have no idea when this bill is going to be heard. But what we do know is that the telecom industry has tremendous influence. And for the Commerce Committee, it was the first bill introduced in the Commerce Committee um, during this new session. So January 3rd, they came back. January 3rd, they introduced these bills. Uh, two weeks later, they passed them out of committee, which is relatively fast. Um, and now it's it's gone out to the Senate floor. So I, I imagine them to be very serious about this, and I'm hoping that this isn't one of the ways that Trump is trying to show that he's taking care of business, because he might be taking care of business and jobs, but he's certainly not going to take care of the health and well-being of our citizens, um, which has been completely left out uh, of this whole formula. Um, so let me – one of the things I wanted to tell people – was when I was talking about um, the, uh, the article, Oxidative Mechanisms of Biological Activity of Low-Intensity Radio Frequency Radiation, I think what's important about the study of the studies is it shows, uh, it looks at 100 studies that look at the cellular effects of microwave radiation from wireless, non-ionizing microwave radiation has on cells. And what they found was that 93 of them, 93 out of 100, showed um, that wireless radiation can cause oxidative damage of DNA and changes, I'm reading actually the quote, and changes in the activity of antioxidant enzymes, okay? And it explains a range, I'm reading as a quote, explains a range of biological and health effects of low-intensity radiofrequency radiation, which include cancer, both cancer and non-cancer pathology, okay? And as a quote, um, this is out of the abstract, and that the oxidative stress induced by radiofrequency radiation exposure should be recognized as one of the primary mechanisms of the biological activity of this kind of radiation. So the FCC is holding on to the idea that non-ionizing, non-thermal radiation does not have biological effects. And what they're saying is 93 out of 100 studies show it does have effects. So we now have cellular studies that show health effects. We have the National Toxicology Program study that showed animal studies, an animal study that showed health effects. And people can look it up. The name of it is the report. Well, this is a Report of Partial Findings from the National Toxicology Program um, Carcinogenesis Studies of Cell Phone Radiofrequency Radiation um, in HSD, Sprague, Dolly, SD rats. So, um, and uh, if you look that up, you'll see that they show, um, they show that, that animals exposed, rats exposed to 2G, early, early generation of wireless radiation caused brain cancer and heart cancer non-thermally. But what's really important about it, it was a two-year study, and it took 16 years for them to partially release the findings because they knew what was in there. 
it's just another example of them hiding and denying the health effects. Um, 16 years for a two-year study to release the partial findings, not even all the findings. So the second part of the findings are going to show DNA damage, do show DNA damage that supports the cancerous uh, development. So now you have cellular studies, animal studies, and you have human studies, which we've actually had for years, that show um, using a cell phone in epidemiological studies um, increases your risk of brain tumors. We've had those human studies for years, and while we should be able to act just based on that, that's not the way it works. In order to increase the classification of an agent as a carcinogen, right now people need to understand that the World Health Organization has already classified the microwave from wireless devices and infrastructure as a class 2B possible carcinogen. That was already done by the World Health Organization in 2011. But as part of that, um, people also need to understand that the first paragraph of their summary says that a positive association has been found between cell phone use and the development of glenomas, which are brain tumors, and acoustic neuromas, which are ear tumors. So there was a positive association found. Now, that information should have been taken and used to develop all kinds of warnings and suggestions of how to reduce people's exposure. None of that happened in this country. None of that happened in this country. So um, we have human studies that we've had for a while. Now we have the animal study, which is very important to get, to get, and that's why that study was commissioned 16 years ago. And we have cellular studies that show wireless radiation inducing cancer. So we now have enough information to reclassify wireless radiation as not a class 2B carcinogen, a possible carcinogen, but now as a probable carcinogen, a class 2A uh, classification. And uh, Leonard Hardell, who's done many studies in Sweden, he makes the argument for a class 1 human carcinogen classification, the same classification as cigarette smoke and asbestos and that we should take precautions, you know, like we do with those in minimizing our exposure. So he argues for a class one human carcinogen classification. And I've read his papers on it, and uh, I think he makes, he makes a valid argument. So people need to understand they're being exposed at least to a established possible carcinogen when they're bringing these cell transmitters close to their homes. And that's with the low frequency radiation. This is now going to be with a high frequency. And you know, the worst case scenario that they're being exposed to a class one human carcinogen like cigarette smoke. So I think people should be very up in arms and I think people uh, should do whatever they think they should do to protect themselves and to hold the government responsible for basically ignoring the safety and well-being of their citizens because that's what's happening due to the, I believe, corruption in the system and that is the industry basically being an extremely a large campaign contributor, certainly to the Democratic Party, but also to the Republican Party. But the Democratic Party, you know, they were one of the primary contributors. So I think it was uh, disgusting that um, President Obama, while they talk about uh, the Democratic Party being for the health of children and the provision, you know, the protection of the environment, meanwhile they are like the number one salesman. And I people telling me about Obama, you know, giving away cell phones to homeless people and things like that, being like the number. I want one my Obama salesman. phone, man. Huh? I want my Obama phone, man. <laughs> exactly. And, and meanwhile, and meanwhile, he's promoting what I believe is one of the most serious. Um, health, environmental, uh, and safety problems of our times, um, and making it uh, horrible, much, much worse. People need to understand that Obama used $25 billion of the stimulus money to expand broadband and expand wireless across the country. Um, so these campaign contributors may be giving millions and millions of dollars to these elected officials, but they're getting back billions of dollars in spending. So it's a, it's a good business proposition for them, but it's not very good for our health. So. Well, let me jump in real quick, if I can, because how do you get to the people that are actually – here's what I see with just about any industry in the United States, whether you are in the food industry, maybe you're in the medical industry, the entertainment industry, maybe you work for a uh, company that sells land or yachts or RVs or whatever. It's – you know, you've got the marketers, you've got the salespeople, you've got the people that build the equipment and the – you know, everything in between. There's all these different people that work in that industry. And people that are working in the industry, in the telecommunications industry, the cell phone industry, that are pushing these agendas and making the big bucks, and and those that are even in the middle level, you know, that have a nice 401k to look forward to and other things, that's their safety net. So they look at what is given to them 
as the solution and everything's okay. There's been plenty of studies that prove you don't have to worry about it. It's such a small percentage. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You can put three of them next to your house. You'll be fine. As a matter of fact, you'll probably feel better the next day because you know that you have access to just download speeds that are beyond your wildest dreams. So, you know, I'm being sarcastic there. So that's the thing is you've got to get out to those people as well. But you won't because they're going to continue to do what they do. I mean, it's just it's human nature most of the time until people snap out of that and say, just because it's a job doesn't mean it's OK. Because a lot of people use that excuse. Well, it's just a job. It's OK. It's just a job. Yeah, I mean, I think you make a, good, a really good point. Um, people need to understand this isn't a problem for someone else. This isn't a problem of someone across, you know, the other side of the tracks. We're all being affected right now, and they're going to make this very much your problem because they're bringing these transmitters to the front of your home. So um, the issue now becomes yours, and I didn't make it that way. The FCC made it that way by bringing these transmitters so close. Um, and people need to understand, they can keep telling you there's not a problem, but the reality is they can keep telling you that, but you're still going to get sick from these microwaves. Um, and people need to understand, the estimate is about a third of people are developing neurological symptoms from wireless radiation. They just haven't made the connection. For instance, you know, if your hand tingles when you're holding the cell phone, that's the radiation from the phone. If um, you get headaches after you put the phone against your head, that's the radiation from the phone. If you get dizzy, sometimes you get vertigo and stuff. Sometimes that's being located near close to a transmitter, either the phone or a Wi-Fi router and stuff. If you're having trouble sleeping, sometimes that can be exposure to wireless radiation because wireless radiation has been in EMF, or electromagnetic frequency waves, have been shown to decrease melatonin in the body. And that's a big problem because it affects sleep. And it, it, when you're sleeping, that your body does a lot of its resting and repairing. Um, also, melatonin is a very strong antioxidant, so it's a big cancer fighter. So it's a big issue for that reason. And the, the decreased melatonin effect, that's been around for, you know, we have the EPA doing studies, you know, this, you know, 30 years ago. And people need to understand the EPA used to do their own studies in this area, was holding conferences in this area, um, and had proposed to the FCC a thermal standard and a non-thermal standard. So it's going to have a two. So they proposed it to the FCC. Unfortunately, shortly after that, Congress banned them from participating in any more EMF-related activities, and they defunded the program that was doing the research. So the one agency that had the qualified people and had the vision to look at health effects and keep it as part of the, you know, as part of the formula, they were consciously taken out of the plan, and it was given to the FCC in the 1996 Telecom Act exclusively as their domain. So people need to understand that's what happened, and it was truly wrong, and we have documentation of it. And I want to, and what you're saying is, I want people to help be part of the solution. If you're good with marketing, I want you to contact me and help us out with that. Because um, we're up against the number one most powerful industry, and I say the most the most devious industry that you can imagine. They're using the same uh, techniques as the tobacco industry. They use the same lobbyists they use. They A lot of them the same researchers. A lot of the same people that the tobacco uh, people use to hide health effects from cigarettes. But I think they've taken it to a new level. Um, and because the technology is very technical and complicated, it's pretty easy to kind of hide health effects. And because you can't see it like you can see smoke, you can't see, feel, or hear these waves, um, they're getting away with, with damage, hurting people when they just don't know it. Um, but there are people who can feel and hear and see the waves, um, these electrosensitive people, and instead of ignoring them and marginalizing them like the industry does, we should be paying attention to them that we're being exposed to something harmful. So let me give you my email. My email is keephealthyfamilies at gmail.com. Keep healthy families at gmail.com. If you're good with social media, I need you. If you're good with the legal stuff, we definitely need you. If you don't like getting involved, but you like giving money to good causes, this is a good cause. We need to hire lawyers to undo what the FCC lawyers have done. It's the lawyers who have really made sure that people aren't able to protect themselves in this country, and it really, it really irks me. So if you want to give funding, you can do that, um, and we can find nonprofits for you to give to that will do that. Um, um, if you have any kind of expertise, if you're good at organizing, we need you. Um, what is sad is that the environmentalists use a ton of wireless and are completely clueless to health effects. That's, that's sad. Um, the uh, the uh, environmentalists, the activists, are using tons of wireless, and they are completely clueless to wireless radiation health effects. Yeah, but a lot of them don't even know what they're really protesting good. about. Sorry to interrupt. They're like, why are we but here, man? Oh, yeah, we don't like Trump. That's why. Why do you like him? I don't know, because he's got blonde hair, man. He's got blonde hair. He's a president. I can't believe it. 
We need a, we need a different one. Damn it. Sorry. Yeah, but, but, but we need it. We need those people's energy. We need those people's ability to organize. This is doing something for your neighbor. This is doing what's right. So keep healthy families at Gmail. If you can help, we need your help. Um, this needs to be a, a team effort because we're all being affected. We're all in this together. And I didn't do this to you. You know, the FCC did this to you, and Congress did it to you because the, Cong- because the FCC acts in behalf of Congress. And that short-sightedness and just looking at jobs and, uh, and money rather than looking at, you know, the health effects. And I think all of it can be taken into consideration, but they've done none of it. Instead of looking at it and balancing it and developing technology that could be safer and beneficial to everyone, they've completely pushed it out and fight looking at health effects tooth and nail. And it's short-sighted um, and it's wrong. It's absolutely unjust uh, and absolutely wrong. Well, in, in closing out, what would you like to share with our audience maybe in regards to what they can expect? Maybe there's some beta testing going on where they're doing this in, you know, like certain blocks, or maybe there's new housing developments. We're like, oh, by the way, you've got download speeds now that are 50,000 gigs per second. You can download the entire internet in 30 seconds. I don't know. I'm just being sarcastic, but is there like a certain box or something they can say, oh, that's what it is. That thing is microwaving people and it's right outside on the curb. Yeah, and what's amazing is they, they justify this whole thing. You can download a movie in four seconds instead of four minutes. Seriously, you're going to intensely microwave your whole family 24-7 so that you can download a movie in three minutes faster. I mean, really? You know, that's the kind of choice that we want to make? I don't think so. Um, and people need to understand, you know, if you're getting tingling in your hands, you're getting the headaches, the vertigo, the difficulty sleeping, the anxiety, the racing heart. The racing heart is one of the most common things. Now, women are made up of a lot of water and fat, more water and fat than we are in terms of their skin. They're very absorbent of this energy. So women are hard, feeling these waves more, and they're holding them more and distributing them less. And so uh, they're getting a lot of health effects uh, from this type of radiation. And I think it's no uh, accident that we have this fibromyalgia and all these weird immune system disorders. So if you're a young person and you're developing some kind of strange immune system problem that your doctors can't explain, by the way, if your doctors can't explain it, given all the tests they have in general, you should look at the possibility that microwave radiation might be causing it um, because it's causing a host of problems. Um, it's been tied to early onset Alzheimer's and, and neurologically de- degenerative diseases. It's been tied to cancers. And if you're developing cancers, um, you know, especially a young person in a site where you have a, a lot of wireless exposure, you know, reduce your exposure. It makes me crazy to see people who have brain tumors still using their cell phones so they'll never recover. Um, I don't think it's an accident that Steve Jobs you know, died of pancreatic cancer, and he was known to be testing his devices. He probably had two or three devices on at all times, and they you know, were transmitting back and forth, and his pancreas was in the middle. You know, pancreatic cancer used to be very rare. People need to understand that brain cancer is now the number one cancer and disease for children from 15 to 19. It's in the top three from 15 to 29 for children. This is what we're doing. Thank you, wireless industry. The other two, uh, brain cancer thyroid cancer and understand that for children when they hold a cell phone up to their head their neck gets a lot of radiation and testes cancer because boys are putting their phones in their front pocket and it pings to the tower about every 30 seconds so their testes are getting a lot of radiation i did see a study out of uh out of the mayo clinic that showed an increase in anal cancer for children 17 to 25 increasing almost 100 percent in the next like uh, five years is expected to increase. Meanwhile, 50 and over, it's decreasing. And the authors said this is exactly opposite of what it should be. And I wrote to them and I said that's because children, young kids, are carrying cell phones in their back pocket and it's pinging to the tower about every 30 seconds and that area is very absorbent of the radiation. So that's very sad because, you know, anal cancer, for kids who get anal cancer, it's highly, highly lethal. For kids who get brain tumors, it's highly, highly lethal. I mean, we are poisoning our young people who are high users, our heavy, heavy users. And for heavy users, there's definitely a relationship. In the studies that were done, um, like the Interphone study in Europe, they showed that if people used a cell phone just 30 minutes a day, which they considered a high user, and that's another way they can minimize the problem by saying a 30-minute user is a high user. Um, for 30 minutes a day, for 10 years, they showed that your risk of a brain tumor tripled. Now, imagine if they looked at the real heavy users, which is like three to six hours, like it is for many people. Um, um, you can imagine how much that risk would increase. And none of these studies take into account multiple exposures. Nobody's just using a cell phone anymore. Right now, they're using cell phones. They're using tablets. You get in your car. You're getting, you're getting a wireless in your car. You get outside. You go into your house. You've got Wi-Fi. You're getting multiple sources of exposure. So 
None of them take into account multiple exposures. So I think we're playing a very, very dangerous game, and our government seems to feel very comfortable to continue pushing the envelope. And I think this 5G technology with its high frequencies and the Mobile Now Act, S19, and uh, the Digit Act, which is going to uh, eliminate government barriers to the expansion of the Internet of Things, which is the vision of this and the reason they feel they need a transmitter near your house is so that they can attach all the devices in your house. Why your stove needs to talk to your refrigerator, I do not know, but that's the vision for things. The problem is it will also put you in the middle of a blanket, a sea of microwave radiation as all these devices are communicating back and forth to each other for what I'm thinking is questionable reasons. Like, this is now technology for technology's sake. You know, do we really need, uh, you know, things, our appliances to talk to each other? Do we really need to turn our refrigerator off when we're not there? Do we really need to turn our lights on when we're not there? You know, you know do we need these things? And do we need these things given the very serious health effects that we have to kind of balance out um, as a trade-off? So people need to contact their senators and tell them they want them to say no to the Mobile Now Act, S19. We want them to call their senators and say, we also want them to say no to the Digit Act, which is S88. Um, and call all the other senators and let all the senators know this country are going to vote for this because it's going to affect the whole country. That you do not want these bills passed. You do not want these transmitters to be continually brought close to your home. And you do not want them to experiment with your health with these new high frequencies, which have not been tested by the FCC for biological non-thermal effects that have been well demonstrated in studies. And it's time that the government get honest and that we reevaluate the, the cancer risk for wireless, which we believe will be either a probable or a class one human carcinogen, and therefore treat the technology as a very dangerous thing that it really is. Well, I certainly appreciate what you're doing. And if you'd like to come back on the show again sometime with Leak Project, he, uh, please keep us updated and we'll remind the people about this because this is something that's important. Also, subs uh, make sure, ladies and gentlemen, Support our sponsors at GetTheT.com. Also, one tack tactical equipment. I'll leave links at the end of the podcast. Hey, thanks a lot, Kevin. This has been great. I really appreciate you coming on the show with us. Yeah, and my email is keephealthyfamilies at gmail.com. Please email me if you think you can help out in any way. Um, and uh, we can do this together. I think we can stand up for what's right and hopefully wake this country up. And if you've got friends who are getting sick and uh, – you think it might be related to wireless radiation, bring up the possibility so that they can get better. I was, I was sitting next to a woman in a conference and I told her what I work on and she said, you know, I'm one of those people. I said, what do you mean? She goes, I had twitching, neurological twitching. I went to all the doctors in the world. I had plenty of money. I went to all the doctors. Couldn't figure out what it was. Then my housing situation changed. She had, it turns out she had like three or four transmitters right around her when she was working at her desk and her housing situation changed. Her wireless radiation exposure changed and her twitching went away. Um, and then she realized there was a relationship between the two. And then whenever she got near a transmitter, she started twitching again. And then she realized, but this took her eight years. And she felt like she was really, her functioning was being disabled by this twitching. And, um, and it took her that long to figure out the connection. So if you hear this share with others, you may be saving their life uh, from a tumor. Um, you may be helping their functioning with neurological effects. And we have to do this all together. We have to wake up together. And we have to hold our elected officials responsible for taking care of us and our health. Right on. Yeah, I certainly feel like I know a lot more now than I did before about this technology and some of the side effects. And, you know, I, I was pretty well versed before about cell phone usage. And, you know, I when I talk on the cell phone, it's as little as possible. And I usually have headphones plugged in, not the wireless kind, because those are actually even worse than putting your phone sometimes next to your head. So I'll just have the ones that plug into the phone with a cord which you know you're not you don't have it right next to your head. I try not to put it in, or I don't put it in my pocket that often and when I do it's as little as possible. So yeah, this is fantastic. Much appreciated. Also youtube.com slash clandestine time lord. Hey tell us again one more time the website please. Yeah so saferemr.com for more information studies and bioinitiative.org. Um, and like like the host was so wise to say use a wired corded headset with your cell phone. Uh, don't sleep with a cell phone on next to you next to your bed at night. Just put it on airplane mode. It still holds. It still the clock still works. Uh, use wired connections to the internet. Uh, use wired keyboards and mouse corded ones. Um, you know, wired corded connections are definitely the solution. They're faster. They're more secure, and they're better for your health. Yeah, very well said. Absolutely. Well, thanks a lot. This has been great. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah.
I, I do love an open platform. I want to tell people right up front what they need to do, and that is contact their senators because the Mobile Now Act, which is S-19, an act called the Digit Act, which is S-88, um, have been passed out of the Commerce Committee and are heading to the full Senate. So people need to contact their senators and actually contact all of the senators and let them know that you do not want this to be passed. Matter of fact, you would like to ask your senator to put a hold on it. Senators, one senator can put a hold on a bill and keep it from being heard by the Senate. So you do have the power in your state to make a big difference. So contact your two senators, and I ask you to actually also, also contact the rest of the senators because this bill is a nationwide bill that is designed to bring small cell, basically small cell tower transmitters close to your home, and that's the big issue. You have small cell transmitters, but even though they're small, they're big enough to cause harm to people, and they're putting people, they're these very close to people's homes. Understand this, the new 5G technology is now going to be from 24 gigahertz uh, to 90 gigahertz. And you can look at the FCC's website. They're very proud of this program. It's not hard to find information there. Um, but that's the plan. But understand this, our current frequency, like your cell phone operates on 90, 900 megahertz, so that's near 1 gigahertz. And then your Wi-Fi operates on 2.4 or 5 um, gigahertz. That's around 3 gigahertz. Um, and some Wi-Fi's operate on 5 gigahertz. Now they're jumping up to 24 gigahertz to 90 gigahertz. This is high frequency, high density, high intensity microwave radiation. And as you go up the spectrum, you get closer to X-ray. So you're talking about intensely microwaving your population. And we know that from regular cell towers and the lower frequencies, people experience increased risk of cancer, increased risk of neurological problems, increased immune system problems, and reproductive harm. One of the things the host was nice enough to ask is, you know, is there any website people can go to for more information? There are some very good resources out there. The one I like to focus on is I use saferemr.com, saferemr.com. That's out of UC Berkeley School of Public Health, and Joel Moskowitz is a scientist there, and he's been following the research worldwide, and he's very careful about vetting it and making sure he brings the best research forth so that people can understand the issues that are going on. Another website is called bioinitiative.org, bioinitiative.org. This looks at 1,800 studies. It's actually in its second generation or second edition, so it looked at 1,800 studies the first time, and now it looks at additional 1,800 studies. So you're talking about 3,600 studies showing health effects to this various systems of the body. It's basically talking about microwaving people, and people need to understand that their cell phone is a two-way microwave transmitter. And when you put the cell phone up against your head, you're microwaving your head. Now, when you put it that way, most people say, ooh, you know, is it a good idea to microwave your head for several hours a day? Most people say, no, not really. Um, but that's what you're doing. And the industry has done a brilliant job in separating the benefits of this technology. And no one's going to argue the, the convenience benefits of this technology. But those convenience benefits have to be balanced with health concerns because there are real health concerns and they go back many, many decades. You can look up something called microwave syndrome, where they started talking about uh, microwave effects from uh, people in the Navy who were on ships with radar. Um, back then, we had UHF TV, so we had uh, a transmission that was similar to our Wi-Fi transmission. And we had two-way radios, and these two-way radios also emitted microwave energy. So they had, they had technology that emitted this, this energy enough that they could look at this, and they were seeing biological symptoms going back 40 years. Unfortunately, because of that research, the industry has known exactly where to lie and hide um, about health effects and how to avoid talking about them because they know they're definitely, definitely there. The host also mentioned that some people we already know are electrosensitive. That is, they develop neurological symptoms from being exposed to wireless radiation. Um, you know, there's a long history of this. It's definitely not people's imagination. Other countries like uh, Sweden recognize electrosensitivity as a disability, and they pay out just like they would any other disability, um, and they're accommodating people. So this is important because Europe had wireless before us. You know, this started over in Europe, and then after it started in Europe and was used in Europe, we brought it to the U.S. and we blew it up. But um, they had it before us, and we should really pay attention to, to them because they saw health effects much, much earlier than we did. Instead, we're ignoring their science. We're ignoring what they've seen for years, um, and we're just pretending only our science matters. Um, but at the same time, we're not really funding much science here. Most of the science is being done overseas. If people want to learn about the research, you can look up a guy named Leonard Hardell, L-E-N-N-A-R-T Hardell, H-A-R-D-E-L-L. -L. He's out of Sweden. He runs a group of scientists that have done many, many studies, and luckily they've been funded publicly and not 
um, through the wireless industry themselves. And that's how the industry has hidden health effects. They fund their own studies. They design around the problem. They know exactly where the problem is. They use uh, groups of people that are too small to show statistically significant effects. Um, they do studies for too short a period to show um, effects. Um, and now their latest thing is to use simulated Wi-Fi or simulated cell phone radiation, not real ones. So the simulated stuff doesn't pulse as much, and it's really in the pulsation or the modulation. Um, and the modulation means, you know, how do you, how do you pack information onto these microwaves that seem to be really uh, the best predictor of something that's going to be disturbing to the cells or to the body. Um, and, um, and so that's how we've done it. And the other, the other way the industry has done it, they've funded their own research, they've designed around the problems, and then every time there's a study on the one side that's done by us and may, is not funded by them, they fund four studies of their own, contradicting it, and then they come to this inconclusive um, conclusion about health effects. But that's really silly because scientists say if you have a good study and it shows health effects, then you have a good study that shows health effects, and our government should certainly pay attention to the hundreds and hundreds of studies that do show health effects um, and, not, and be very conscious of the funding and the design, the poor design that are used in a lot of these studies that don't show health effects. Um, and they should side on the side of caution that is protecting us, um, but they haven't done that at all. They're moving forward in very aggressively, and they're taking wireless. They're increasing the frequency, which is increasing the pulsation and increasing the amount of waves per second, which we believe will increase the health effects. They're bringing the transmitters closer to people so they feel more affected, um, which we feel will make this technology much, much more dangerous. Um, and they're doing it every three, or three to ten homes because that's what the technology requires. This new high-frequency stuff does not travel very well, the 4G lower uh, frequencies have much bigger waves. They travel much more. This is a much denser, tighter wave. It doesn't travel very well. doesn't go in all directions very well. So you have to have transmitters literally every three to ten homes. And if you live in one of those homes where it's right in front of your house, I would expect those people largely to, be get, to develop symptoms. Uh, a lot of the studies with the old frequencies, the lower frequencies, say about 30% of the people exposed will develop some kind of neurological